The new Liberal government will take office with a stack of legal cases on its desks. Let's take a look at some of the more high-profile cases and which ones may go away. There's the Canadian Civil Liberties Association suing over changes to Policy 713. Susan Holt says she'll adopt what we could call a compromise proposal from child and youth advocate Kelly Lamrock, but that may not be enough for the CCLA to drop the lawsuit. We urge her to listen to those who are most affected and to revert back to the original policy. So we'll look forward to, to speaking with them to see uh, what their issues are with the recommendation of the child and youth advocate. The Anglophone East District Education Council is also in court on Policy 713. Two courts have put two parts of that case on hold in case the Liberals want to rethink the province's position. Holt says she will stop an application by the government to dissolve the council. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has another case against the province to quash the ban on Medicare funding for surgical abortions outside hospitals. Abortion is health care uh, and people in New Brunswick need better access uh, to abortion and there are, there are places that are ready to deliver those services and people are ready to deliver those services. We're waiting to see if there is any action taken on this, um, but yes, if, it's, um, if there is sufficient action taken, there would be no need for um, pursuing the lawsuit further. Another lawsuit is about two courthouses the Higgs government closed in Tracadie and Karakat. A judge ordered the province to reconsider, taking into account minority language rights. Holt hasn't made any promises on that. Local mayors who took the case to court say they're willing to settle for one courthouse in the region instead of the original two. But what we're saying to her and to the new government as soon as it will be blight, please don't discuss with us through the court. Come and see us. The Francophone South District Education Council is also suing the province over language rights, arguing the lack of new Francophone school construction in the district is unconstitutional. Because we're getting a briefing on what's all in the capital budget at a detailed level in the, in the next couple days uh, so that we can see you know, if anything needs to be adjusted or addressed to make up for some of the, the shortcomings in terms of investment in Francophone education. So, A third language case involves the Vitalité Health Network. A francophone lobby group says the suspension of partly elected health authority boards in 2022 was also unconstitutional. Blaine Higgs brought the boards back last year, but they're not elected. We don't know what position Holt will take on that. Then there's the lawsuit by Dr. Jean-Robert Ngola. He is suing the province over comments Higgs made at a 2020 news conference, blaming Angola but not naming him for an outbreak of COVID-19 in the province because he failed to self-isolate after returning to New Brunswick. Higgs is gone, but the case is against the province and Angola's lawyers say it won't go away until there's a settlement or a ruling. The toughest cases may be two Indigenous land title claims filed by Wolustikwe and Mi'kmaq First Nations after the Higgs government cancelled tax sharing agreements. Now, you know, title cases are, are very complex and litigation takes a while. And, you know, we're looking at probably, I'm going to say 20 years. Holt has promised a new respectful relationship with First Nations, including new tax agreements, but any larger agreement will not be easy. I think the key thing is here is to have uh, the conversation, be at the table, work with the government that is going to uh, work with the Indigenous people. 